slide of Dr. Jyoti Agarwal, please. So, uh, So it's it's my proud privilege to introduce Dr. Jyoti Agarwal, who's going to give a very, very pertinent talk on a topic called teratology. We all know what medications we need to give, but we think twice always, will it be safe in pregnancy or not? So very sick, simple, six general principles in a very short, precise, and a curt talk she's going to be speaking. We all know Dr. Jyoti Agarwal, she does not need any introduction. She's a senior consultant director at Life Care Center and Life Care IVF. She has been the past president of the East Delhi Gynecologist Forum, and now she holds the position of advisor of the DGF East. She's a certified trainer of the DGF for infertility for ultrasounds as well as colposcopy, and has been decorated with several awards, of which most important is the Teacher's Excellence Award of the DGF 2017. So I would now request Dr. Jyoti Agarwal to please deliver her talks in the Pearls of Wisdom on Territology. Thank you, Dr. Jyoti. Um, thank you very much. I'll just take a minute and I'll share my screen. Hostess disabled your screen sharing. It is saying host has disabled my screen sharing. I would request the host to please enable me. All uh, rights are already been given. Can you please try one more time? Okay. All rights have been given to everybody. So not a problem. Please check one more time, please. Yes, now I've got it. Now I've got the uh, window which is on. I switch it. I I click it. Click yes, it on right please, side. Pe likha hoga. Can you? Oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry for the inconvenience. Can you? Am I audible and visible both? Yes. No, you're not visible. Dr. Jyoti, you don't have any shakal. Just the rest of the screen is the rest of the screen. Okay. Okay. Can you see the shakal? No. No. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. 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 Okay. So I start with. So in the very beginning, a very warm welcome to all of you and a very good afternoon to all my respected seniors and my dear friends. Today, I'll be talking on basic principles of teratology. It's a very simple and a brief lecture, but at the same time, a very important one. And I would request all the gynecologists to remember each and every point because it will help our patients to go through a safe journey and have a safe outcome. It is really <coughs> my slides are not moving. What do I do? Click on the slide once by mouse. In the center? Anywhere yes. on the side. Yes. Okay. And now try to move yes. on the keyboard. Yes. Also. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Now it's moving. So we all know the capability of producing a fetal malformation is known as teratogenicity. And as far as the global burden of the disease is uh, concerned, it is about 3% of the... Something is coming on my screen. 3% of the new newborns have a major physical anomaly that has a cosmetic or a functional significance. As far as the congenital, um, as far as the deaths are concerned due to congenital disorders, they were almost to the tune of 5 lakhs in 2010. This is WHO criteria. And gladly it has been reduced to 3 lakhs in 2020. And it is so because of better pickup and they are being offered a timely termination. So teratogenesis has four main uh, manifestations. Either it can be lethal and it may cause death. It may cause malformation, it may cause growth retardation, or the baby may be alive with some kind of functional defect. The manifestations of the deviant development increase in frequency and degree as the dose increases from the no observable adverse effect level known as NOEL to a dose producing 100% lethality that is known as LD100. These are the very basic things. So, Let's discuss what is Wilson's six general principles of teratogenesis. This will provide a framework for understanding how structural or functional teratogens may act. And these principles of teratology were put forth by Sir Williams in his monograph, Environment and Birth Defects. Just a word about Professor Sir Wilson. He was an embryologist and anatomist. He was a co-founder of the Society of Teratology. And in his honor, annually, and 
uh, Sir Wilson Publication Award is given to the best paper accepted in the general birth defects research. So now discuss what is this Wilson six general principles of teratogenesis, which as a gynecologist we should all remember. The first principle is genotype and the interaction with the environmental factor. What I mean by this is that the susceptibility to a teratogen depends on the genotype of the conceptus and the manner in which the genetic makeup of the conceptus interacts with the environmental factor. And in simple terms, this is known as epigenetics. Mera jo genome hai, main us genome se kaise react karte Do I think positive? Do I worry? Do I, or I think um, negative about everything? Wo jo abhi humne, uh, baby Rathor ka video suna, that is called epigenetics. And in fact, uh, in-depth studies have been done regarding different genetic strains of mice which vary greatly in their susceptibility to teratogens which leads to oral clefts. And same is true because as far as the anti-epileptic drugs are concerned like valproic acid and phenytoin and their side effects is primarily related to the genotype of the embryo. That means in some embryo it may have an effect, in others it may not have depending upon the genotype and my interaction with the environment, that is epigenetics. I hope I'm clear about the first principle. If so, then I go to the second principle, that is timing of exposure. This means, this is very clear, it's a self-explanatory thing, and this concept of critical stages of development directly affects the structure of the embryo. It is during the second to eighth week of development after conception that most structural defects occur. Neural tube defects result from exposure between 22 to 28 days post conception. The classic teratogenic period as far as the drug is concerned is from day 31 to day 71 from the last menstrual period. Administration of drugs early in this period may affect the heart and the neural tube, but later exposure affects the formation of ear and the palate. And suppose the exposure is before day 31, then it is all a non phenomenon that is resulting either in death of the conceptus or survival with no anomalies. This slide clearly demarcates that if the exposure is in the pre implantation phase, it is a lethal thing. The, em the embryo will die. And suppose the exposure is during the time of organogenesis, the baby will be born with morphological defects, and a late exposure may cause functional disorders growth retardation and maybe it may also cause it may be also carcinogenic the third principle is mechanism of teratogenesis teratogenic agents act in a specific way on the developing cells and tissues initiating an abnormal embryogenesis which we all know is known as pathogenesis i may not dilate the subject anymore the fourth principle is manifestation I just discussed that the manifestation can be in four forms. I repeat, it may be death, malformation, growth restriction, or functional disorders. So manifestation depends largely on the stage of development at which the exposure occurs. That is, a teratogen may have one effect if the exposure occurs during embryogenesis. That, may, that means it may cause structural abnormalities or death, or it may have another effect if the exposure is during the fetal period. That means the baby may be born with functional defects. This is manifestation. The fifth principle is the agent. For an adverse effect to occur, an agent must reach the conceptus either transmitted indirectly or through maternal tissues or directly by traversing the maternal body. To make it simple, it is like so many drugs are there, but only 4% of the drugs may cause malformations because the agent has to reach there. Or the other example may be, suppose we are standing at a traffic red light where there are so many vehicles and at the same time there is so much of pollution also. So these are the two ways that the teratogens may act either directly or indirectly. That means this principle re relates to pharmacological factor depending upon the maternal metabolism and the placental passage of the agent. The sixth principle is the dose effect. Manifestations of abnormal development increases in degree from no effect level to the lethal level as the dose increases. So it depends upon the dose and the duration 
on the amount of exposure. In utero exposure of ionizing radiation clearly shows the importance of dose on teratogenic effects. So it is very important to understand the basic principle, the basic six principles of Wilson's uh, principles, and this will definitely help us to nurture healthy and strong families. If we follow this, it will help us gynecologists to guide and counsel our patients so that they have a safer outcome and make healthy and strong families. This slide concludes all the six points in one slide. And to recapitulate, I have just made a mnemonic so that we remember all the six forms and it goes by the name MAD management, where M stands for manifestation, A for agent, D for dose, and the management part is M is mechanism, G for genotype, and T for timing. Thank you all very much. This is a very simple and a brief talk just to make familiar with the six basic principles. And we can go on to a second lecture late, sometime later on to know the details of it. Thank you very much. I stop sharing. Thank you so much, Dr. Jyoti. I think you've set the ball rolling and we're going to really wait for your next lecture to come soon. As sure. you said, this is the part one, then we're going to wait for the part two. As well as most important for all of us obstetricians also to know which drugs are not to be prescribed in the first trimester, in the second and the third. So we really wait for your lecture coming on to this in the next webinar that we have. So we have had two tremendous webinars, lectures today from Madam on Diodrogestron. And the best part was that the experts speaking from their particular um, experience and everyone bringing out the points very strongly that what you need for the management of threatened miscarriage is first to overcome your own fear. Once we tend to overcome our own obstetrical fear, then we can counsel our patients very well, reassure them. Bed rest is not essential at all. They can just carry on with the normal activity, but excessive exertion to be prevented. Diodrogestron forms the basis of the medical management, but ultimately it is the baby's life which is going to decide whether it's going to continue or not. But definitely diodrogestron does help and we should know when to stop the diodrogestron. Mm -hmm. And with Dr. Jyoti's lecture on teratology, it's a food for thought for all of us. We really need to think each time we write, are we looking at the six principles that she has really talked to? So with that, uh, we'd come to the end of this particular webinar, and I would request. Dr. Jyoti, please uh, uh, tell them about tomorrow's uh, invitation. That's it. That's it. I was going on to say. So again, tomorrow we would like to see each one of you, and I would really request all the presidents of all the forums, please circulate, encourage your members to participate because it's going to be tomorrow your forums president who's going to be also having their oration. So this is uh, basically our gratitude, our. Um, applause for the efforts that the presidents have made for the forums and they hand it over during the two years of COVID. So we were not able to physically congratulate them or applaud them or praise them. So this is one way when we are going to know them through their thoughts, through their orations. So please, everyone, do log in tomorrow at three o'clock and make it a huge success for each one of us. Thank you very much. And thank you to all the experts for being there here today with us. Thank you, Madam, and thank you, Dr. Jyoti. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dr. Jyoti, aapko bohat dino baad suna. it was a pleasure. You know, I'm a big fan of your slides. And uh, <laughs> many and, <laughs> and thanks to you and Mayam. I actually read this article on the Wilson Six Principles. I didn't know about it. Yeah. Ka. I read it thoroughly. Me too, Jyoti. I read it before. So that was good. I miss those days with you, Dr. Deepti. I really miss the days. You have your oration. So you just check it out. We have your oration this year coming. Yes, I have noted. 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 Made us read. That is yes, the yes. Thing. Uh, really, it really makes a difference. You know? All familiar with the same thing, the doors and the timing. Uh -huh. The only uh -huh. thing is, it goes by the name of Wilson. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. An award is given annually in honor of uh, Sir Wilson. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wilson ka ye pehli baar pada. और बाकी पता तो सबको यह है ये सब चीजें पर लेकिन फिर भी है ना इट वाज द वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग. मालूम सबको है बट विल्सन का नाम जानना जरूरी है.
पर आ, आपका जो आपका वो जो लास्ट वाल है ना कि मैड मैनेजमेंट वो बेस्ट वी हैव इंटरनेट एंड शेयरिंग योर थॉट विद ईच अदर यू ऑलवेज एनरिच्ड ऑलवेज एनरिच